What elements of Islam do you think people are misinformed about? Terrorists, I suppose, what people attach Muslims to straight away. As far as I'm aware in the Quran, the worst thing you can possibly do is take a life, whether it may be your own or somebody else, to so take one life to take the life of all. We're not saying that heaven ain't a beautiful, lovely place, but we're not saying to go there in a rush. Andrew Tate, has he been good for the internet? I do not really disagree with anything he says, apart from his views on women. I don't believe in Jake Paul. To be honest with you, I look at some of them fights and I actually look and think to myself, are they legit? I'm sure there's women out there a lot stronger than myself still, but as a rule, women aren't as strong as men. Alfie Best Jr., a very, very successful young man, and is the son to his father, Alfie Best Sr. One of the major changes since our podcast part one is he's changed his faith. He's now Muslim. So, of course, I want to ask him about that, how he's grown his social media following, and basically anything to do with business. Enjoy this episode, subscribe, and be happy, never content. Welcome back to the podcast, The Stephen Sully Study. We're uh, at our new premises over in Mayfair, London. I've got a part two with Mr. Alfie Best Jr. in front of me. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for agreeing. And there's a lot to talk about, Alfie. Absolutely. Pleasure's all mine. I'm uh, super impressed with the new premises. Honestly, it's took me breath away. And if ever you're passing by, I'd advise anybody to call in and have a look at the beautiful art you've got about. Thank you, Alfie. Thank you. So we were just saying off air, May the 5th, 2021 was our first podcast interview. I can't believe how quickly time has gone. I mean, it's just flown by. It's just, and when you're busy and you're working hard, listen, you've obviously had a lot going on the same as myself. Seems like there's not enough time in the day. Yeah, definitely. So there's been a lot of changes with myself, with the brand Woodbury House. Uh, clearly, we're, 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 we're here in Mayfair now, but there's also equally a lot of changes with yourself. And excuse the, 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 the pun, obviously your surname is best, but you guys, including your dad, just seem like you're getting better and better and better and better in everything you do, your profile, your social media following, your business, how, how uh, smart you're becoming in the business world. It's, it's very, very motivational. So when I was doing a bit of research to try, try and find new topics to talk about, I just, typically what I do now is I'll type in the guest name, I'll go into news and see what news articles come up, okay? The Sun has written about both you guys in a positive light a lot of the time. And this one on the 22nd of May, uh, sorry, 25th of July, 2022, so only a few months ago, The Sun says, Millionaires Club, who is Alfie Best Jr.? And then I found a quote that you said, which, which goes like this, to work for yourself, you don't need qualifications, you just need to want to do it. Now, what did you kind of mean by that? And could you elaborate? Well, obviously I do think in, in, in for, for some people, qualifications are very important. For me, they haven't been, so I haven't had them. So I've, I've had, and without the want to do something, then you've not really got a lot, have you? You know, because you don't have the drive and, you know, to, to make something a chore, which then it's not enjoyable, it's not fun, and you don't want to learn, you don't want to educate yourself. So if you've got the want to do it, you're interested and when you're interested, you're more likely to educate yourself. You understand? And, and, and it's like, you know, it's like, it's like a piece of twine yeah. that just keeps pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling, you know? Yeah, definitely. The, um, the article is talking about yourself and your dad. And again, I like to read these articles. I don't know how always true they are, but I, I'm a business person. And first and foremost, the only way I feel that I get ahead in my, in my life is by being motivated, having my own goals, but seeing people that I know, or maybe even loosely know, seeing what they're up to, because it's not about me comparing me to them, it's just about, wow, they've achieved something, I wanna go off and do that, and it gives me that inspiration, hence why I read it. It says here, Alfie Best Jr.'s net worth is not known, but his the father's estimate is around about 341 uh, million pounds. Um, I mean, how, how, how true is that? That estimate of net worth. Um, um, as far as I'm aware, I'm, I'm sure that's quite old. I think that's. Uh, I think it's relatively more today. I actually believe it was closer to 750 million. Yeah. Well, it also says here that the empire that your dad's got has grown to 1.2 billion pounds, and uh, yeah, I mean his 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 uh, empire just seems like it's grown all the time. The quote from him is. Uh, well, the quote that they said in the sun is the Romary uh, gypsy millionaire has spoken about wanted to become the first gypsy billionaire from the UK. Is that a true motivation that your dad's got? I'm, I'm sure it is. You know, that like, you know, we've got to set ourselves goals. 
you know that gives you a, a very good amount of drive to push yourself forward so to have a goal you know he's, he's, he's past the, uh, the, the the million stage he's past the 100 million stage past the 250 million stage you've got to look at what's next so what's next for him would be the billion yeah definitely um, I know money's not always the be all and end all uh, of stuff but let's face it and let's look at the reality it's one of the metrics that we use in order to see how successful an individual is a country is and even a company um, have you ever calculated your own net worth, Alfie? Uh, I'm in the Sunday Times rich list at under 30s at 10 million, okay. which I think that's there or thereabouts, correct? Yeah. And what's your sort of next financial goal? Where do you see yourself in the next year, two years, three years, five years, 10 years? Um, I want to keep pushing as hard. And, and, and the, what it is, is as a person, I can only work so hard, there's only so much I can do. So what I would suggest to anybody is that's looking to get rich or, or that wants to be a millionaire or a billionaire or, or push forward in their life is that you need to make money work for you, which however that may be, if you've got a business, like you need to be earning money when you sleep, right? So I just want to earn as much money as I possibly can by myself. I need to work. You know, without me, most of my business, without me, they wouldn't work. Like I am the business. So... Whatever money I earn, I want to try and put into property because it's what I know. Because I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, the most educated person in the world. So that does have its downsides, but I do understand that property is a very good investment, and obviously it needs managing. But you invest your money, you get a return, and also inflation. So the property is going up yeah. in value. So to me, it sounds like a no-brainer. But as, as for the business I have now, I have to run them. I have to work them. I've got the two mobile home sites of my own, which they they don't run themselves. There's still a lot needs doing. But that was a very good investment. And that's what got me on the property ladder. Uh, I also buy and sell watches, as I discussed last time. But I run the business. I, if I'm not working, promoting it, pushing it, doing all the Instagram, it, it, it doesn't work. And I've also, um, I've also started buying and selling tickets for events. Uh, which again, I am the business. So I don't think that's a bad thing, but it keeps me very busy. And if I stop, I go to sleep, the business is not earning money, which I believe a business to make uh, extreme money should be a business that money makes money, yeah. where you're earning money when you sleep, when you're earning money when you go away. You know. And I also am a big believer in all the time you're not earning money, you're spending it. So by going to work and trying to earn money, you're saving it. You know, because if you're not and you're trying to enjoy yourself and try and pass time, that costs money. Yeah, yeah. You know, for some people, they might work to do that. Me, I don't want to work to do that. I want to work to get as far as I possibly can. And yeah, I want to enjoy my life the best I can. But, you know, in order to do that, I want the finer and the best things in life. Yeah. So from an outsider and just knowing you, your father, you know, you know, only only slightly. Um, it seems like your dad's really focused on the park homes, and he's exploded over the last few years. I mean, he was very very wealthy many years ago when I used to see him on the BBC doing like documentaries and stuff. But now it just seems like he's gone from here to this whole new juggernaut level, which is super inspiring. But he he, he looks like he just focuses on that, whereas yourself, you're willing to give other stuff a go. You know, the watches, the tickets social media influencer, being on TV, being in kind of more reality TV stuff, property, etc. cetera. Um, why do you think that is? Why do you think that you're a bit more kind of willing to give other stuff a go, whereas it looks like from an outsider that your dad is kind of stuck to what he knows? Because he's, he's, he believes that stick to what you know, which I understand. I'm young and I'm willing to take more risks. It's as simple as that. And I want to be, I want to do better than he has. You know, and I'm going to. It's as, it's as simple as that. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a competition. You know? Like, I've got a very, very, very... I wouldn't say big boots to fill because I'm not trying to fill them. I'm trying to walk straight past them. You know? And I believe that, you know, with what he's done, that like England's a small place and there's only so many mobile home parks in the country. You know, I want to have my fingers in a few pies. Now, some things might not work. I believe in taking risks, calculated risks, but I want to earn, obviously, as much money as I can, and I want to do better than me dad has. You know, I've got a, a, a not that it's, um, not that 
not that there's any, uh, I, don't, I don't know the word I'm looking for, not that like, it's, it's like nastily I want to do better than him, but I just want to do, uh, I just want to do better. I want to overtake him. I want to push further forward. And the thing is, I see that I would be unable to do that just with mobile home parks. Because he's the best, he's the biggest for mm. a start. You know, he knows the job inside out. He's got years worth of experience behind him. Yeah. And I, I believe in get like, you know, why not give something a try? Yeah. You know, yeah. and, I, and I'm willing to work it and do it myself and I'm willing to educate myself the best I can. Yeah. If I was a fly on the wall, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, over Christmas, I don't know how close, you know, your family are uh, and how much you, you know, really get together and celebrate Christmas. But let's say typically families over Christmas, things wind down, might have a little beer, you know, glass of wine, enjoying your, your turkey, whatever you're having. The conversation that you and your dad have, okay, mm -hmm. Is it always about business? Is it always about competition? Is he spurring you on to say, I want you to try and overtake me, but I'm not going to let you? What, what's it like? It's very rarely is it not about business. Even if it starts off as a general conversation, it will always end up talking about business, which sometimes ain't always very nice, to be honest. Um, but that's, that's how it always... Uh, that, that's why do you say not, not, not very nice? Because it's also nice to talk about other stuff. There is also other stuff which I do believe, and I know a lot of people would look at me and think that, oh, he's business, business, money, 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 money. But I also do like to take a fraction of time out to do some of the stuff that I like, which I don't see such a bad thing. Mm. My dad's actually a million mile an hour. He doesn't, really. Yeah. You know, like, you know, when there's family time and we're talking about other stuff, it's good to talk about other stuff. It's good to empty your mind and relax. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. I might be wrong. But. And is, is the competition language, tone uh, and two alpha type mouths in the room saying, yeah, business is going really well. This is what I'm going to be doing. And then you're trying to like, in a, in a, in a professional and a kind family way, oh, I'm going to be doing this next year and I'm going to be pushing for this kind of next level. What's what's the conversation like with you two? I'll be 100% honest and I might be wrong. Deep down, I don't think he wants me to overtake him. <laughs> I think like, for him, it's like, like, you know, I'm younger. I'm, the, I'm further forward than he was when he was my age. A lot further forward. You know, and listen, you can say, I've used all of, uh, of my assets, like contacts, the name that I've got, to my advantage, why wouldn't I? You know, some people would look up and say, would he be where he is today without his dad? More than likely not, to be honest. But as he put his hand in his pocket and give me any money, absolutely not. But still, I've used the contacts that he's had. He's got years worth of contacts that he's built up. We've got a brilliant reputation. We've got brilliant credibility, street credibility with the banks. You know, it's a brilliant name to walk in anywhere with, isn't it? You know, and it's not like you say, it's only building, it's only getting bigger, it's only getting better. And I will carry that on, you know? So that is an advantage that I'm at that maybe he never had when he was younger. Yeah. But I'd be a fool not to use every advantage I'd had. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So talk to me about, you know, in the last year and a bit since we spoke and done the podcast, a lot has changed with you. Mm -hmm. So obviously business, you had a boxing fight, but also you've gone over to Islam and also, I don't know if it was change of religion, but actually... Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe start your faith with Islam and and being Muslim. So tell me, tell me a bit more about that. Well, I was a Christian. I wasn't very religious, not uh, um, in any which way, shape, or form. I wasn't religious um, at all, really. But I would, I would have been, would have been a Christian. Um, so, cut a long story short, you know, I've always felt like there was something missing. You know, and I've never really had anybody to pull my reins in, you know, to, 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 to give me the do's and the don'ts and, and real life guidance. And I went to the mosque once with uh, one of my friends and his mum took his shahada. And I walked in, I said, I'll come in, I'll, I'll look, you know, I'll see what it's all about. You know, I'm, op I'm very open minded and I'm actually very intrigued or I was very intrigued by, by the whole uh, the whole of Islam. You know, I look at Dubai and I think to myself, wow, you look at Qatar, wow. And I'm obviously very money motivated and so are they. You know, as a religion, um, as, as a religion, they, 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 they seem to get on in the world, you know, so their guidance might not be too far wrong. So it's always interested me very much, more so than any other religion, let's say. Mm -hmm. So I went and watched her, um, I went and watched my friend's mum do his shahada. And I genuinely, I felt something in the mosque that I've never felt anywhere else. I thought this is maybe what's missing. So I took a Quran and I started reading it. 
And I love the morals, the respect, and the guidance that it actually gives you. You know, and I thought that, like, you know, I'm I'm compatible with that. I'm, uh, um, like, it suits me, you know? You know, before, listen, I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. Only, only God is perfect. But it tries to make you a better person. Now, I don't see that as being a bad thing. You know, and uh, before you're about to do, before you're about to sin, which we all sin, it's just in them we're human beings. You have uh, uh, something kick in, and like a conscience, which really I've never had. And uh, then, and then after that, I read the Quran, and like I say, I, I felt that uh, I understood most of it. It took me a couple of times because I'm more or less illiterate. I can't, I can read, but I can't understand books. So I can read the words, but I can't, I'm not really up to where it is. Do you understand where I'm coming from? And uh, I read it, and I, and I understood it, and I thought, I thought, wow, you know, I thought, what a good, uh, what a good community, and what good guidance that it actually that it actually gives you. Mm. And I've never felt so welcomed into something, and I've actually felt very good getting up in the morning and praying. You know, it's a stress relief when you're working as hard as I do, daylight to dark. It, it gives you like a, 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 I can't, I can't even explain it, but you know, it, it, it's, it's, it, uh, genuinely, I can't actually explain it. But after you've prayed, it's like a, a, a sense of relief. You know, like you've got something done, you know, like maybe getting a deal across the line or something that's a weight on your mind if you suffer with a little bit of anxiety. After you've prayed, it seems to have, to have cleared, you know. Mm. Um, so the, I think not announcement, but you posted on Instagram on the 30th of September with yourself mm -hmm. in like, um, I want to be- phobe. Yeah, I was, I want to be respectful because I'm not up to speed with the right terminology. I was going to call it a gown, but you called it a- Phobe. Phobe, okay. Look very very smart, mate, um, and it looked like you've been practicing it for 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 some time. But like all these things, when someone makes a shift, like sometimes we're all put in a box, right? So Alfie Best and his dad are in this box. Then these type of people are in this box, and you know Steve Sully's in this box, and you know people have these kind of self communication internally, and the moment that you disrupt that they start thinking, oh, what, what's going on here? This doesn't make any sense. And they, a white guy, you know, a, a, a gypsy from your heir to your dad's, you know, 1.2 billion pound empire, people are thinking, okay, he's got everything he needs. How the hell has he gone from being Christian? Now he's following the faith of Islam and, and going down that road. I think it's great. And I think that you should be allowed to do anything you want in your life. However, there must be some nay naysayers out there. There must be people that have tried to ridicule you and probably were confused why you've done it. Can you shed a bit more light on that? Yeah, well, listen, there's, there's, it come as a shock to most people, people that knew me, you know, very well. They never see it coming. You know, I never see it coming. I wouldn't have expected it myself. You know, it all happened, uh, uh, like I say, I walked in the mosque, I f it felt right, I read the book, I understood the morals. The morals were very close to travelling morals. You know, no sex before marriage. You know, it advises you not to drink alcohol. And you pray five times a day, you keep up the prayer. Look, I'd, 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 it, for something that's going to benefit you in this life and the next, I can't see it as being a bad thing. We believe in all religions, as Islam. You know, it's, um, and there was a lot of people out there, that, you know, that, uh, that wouldn't, they're always looking for something to criticise me about anyway. It was just something that they could criticise. It doesn't bother me. I'm very thick skinned. It, you know, it, it, it's, it's for me. I'm not doing it to please anybody else. You know, I'll try and help people the best I can, like, you know, my friends and people around me. But am I living my life to please other people? Absolutely not. Yeah. You know, I believe that they should crack on with their own life and, and do do as they please. It doesn't bother me. I don't get involved. You know, my friends, I try to advise the best I can and, and give them the right guidance. That might be right. It might be wrong. I don't know. But my, most of the time, it's what I would do, you know. And, um, yeah, it comes it come as a shock to most people. It comes as a shock to me family. But, again, when you're out going to parties and drinking and they're, um, everyone's around you and they're all having a good time, which, okay, yes, you're having fun, but it's not good for your health. It's not good for your life. You know, I was going out maybe of a weekend. I wasn't recovering really properly till Wednesday or Thursday. You know, and that's ripped off a whole week. And um, 
when you want to do good, which is positive, I believe, and I'm, I'm sure the whole of Islam believe, they want to they want to criticize for it. Hmm. All the time you're going in clubs, spraying champagne, they're, oh, yeah, that's great, that's unbelievable. But then when you do something positive, like a change of faith, which, to be honest, I don't really take it as a change of faith. I never really had a religion in the first place. I never really not understood. I was never interested in Christianity. It never bothered me. You know? That, like, I, I don't understand it. It's hard for me to talk, but I understand Islam, and I, I believe it's right. It fits for me. Yeah. Um, again, a, a, a small sense, and correct me if I'm wrong here. So, like all of us, I mean, I've done it as well. That months, weeks, and months, sometimes longer years, you find yourself, you know, doing business, making money, but there's kind of almost a bit no purpose to it. And then what you start doing is, I don't want to call them the wrong people, mm -hmm. but party people, mm -hmm. around girls, going out and spending days out and it's a vicious cycle of like doing that, then trying to go back to the gym, trying to swear, swell it all out, you know, work really hard, and then you're back, do it, and it's and it's it's a really unhealthy kind of carousel that you keep them going around. And maybe I'm trying to, I'm, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of that from you, and you're using partly Islam as a way of cleansing out your body. Am I picking it up? One hundred percent. Like I said, I, d I don't believe I was a bad person before. You know, I believe I was a good person. I used to go out. I'm not saying I'll never go out ever again, because I will. But, you know, like I say, it's it's a little bit of guidance. That the, the, the answer to the question is, yeah, part, partying's good. You network, you meet new people. I've met some very, very good friends through going out, you know. But it's not good to get where I need to go. I haven't got five days to waste. You know, like I said about myself, I am the business. You know, I can't come in there feeling sorry for myself. And as for as 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 for the religion, God put the religion in front of me, and and He introduced me to it. And without Him, nothing would be possible. You know, and uh, in, when 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 I took my shahada, I was actually asked by the Imam. You know what what brought me to Islam, or, or what asked me the same question: Why why did I convert or revert? And um, the answer, the answer was simple. Do you know what I mean? Only God, only God can answer that question. And as far as I'm aware, he led me straight to the mosque. He led me into the mosque, and he gave me that feeling that I felt. What went through the whole of my body, which I've never felt in any place in my whole life. Yeah, you know, for that just to click, like this is what I'm missing. And I believe I'm, I'm a, a better person. I'm trying to be a better person, and that's what matters. It's your intentions. Yeah. You know, I'm not up to scratch with it. I'm trying to learn my prayers. I'm not the best, but I'm learning. My intentions are good. I pray as much as I possibly can. I go to the mosque every Friday. And again, it gives you a little bit of guidance or not even a little bit. It's, it's a beautiful and simple religion, you know, and it's, uh, uh, I feel better for doing it. And, and, and that's what, you know, what you ask God for, God grants. Yeah. You know, I think this life's a test and, uh, um, Listen, there, there, there can't be no criticism to want some help in this life and the next. Yeah. You know? Can I ask what was your dad's reaction, response like when he knew that you converted to Islam? Um, he's not very religious at all. He's, listen, he's, he's, he's not very religious anyway. The, the, the questions you're asking, he obviously asked, like, why? What for? Right. And, uh, and again, it's actually a difficult one to explain, but all I can tell you is that it felt right, which if it feels right, it must be right. You know, I believe in a gut instinct, you know, a gut instinct is sent from God. You know, nine times out of ten, your gut instinct's not never wrong. Yeah. And uh, I said to him, I just said to him, what basically what I've just said to you. Like, I can't, why? It's making me a better person or wanting to be a better person or trying to be a better person. Hmm. Yeah. Like regardless if it makes me a better person or not, surely with the intentions of trying to be a better person, like if you do 10 bad things and you're trying to be a better person, you just do one good thing. Will this benefit or, or, or it was worth doing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, with Islam and with, you know, converting over, there are a lot of people that I would say because of my upbringing, because of my family, because of my friends and stuff, that probably don't understand it and are actually misinformed because of the mainstream media or because of 
they might attach that religion to an organisation that have done wrong in the past and now they brand everybody the same. What elements of Islam do you think people are misinformed about? Um, it's a hard question to answer because I don't want to insult anybody and I don't want to be wrong. But, um, you know, it's... it's um, Well, look, the way I look at it, it's just a very simple and beautiful religion. There's good and bads in all races, colours, religion, you know. And again, when somebody can attach a religion to something, it's just the first thing they bring up. I've had stigma my whole life through being a traveller. And I'd like I say, there's good and bad in all people. But I couldn't really answer that question, you know. But look, you've got you've got terrorists i suppose what people attach muslims to straight away but to be honest with you as far as i'm aware in the quran the worst thing you can possibly do is take a life whether it may be your own or somebody else to so take one life to take the life of all and mm. to save one life is to save the life of all mm. you know we're not saying that heaven ain't a beautiful lovely place but we're not saying to go there in a rush yeah now i might be wrong like i say i've read the quran i've read it twice and that's what i remember so, uh, uh, you know, but people want to attach, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, of racist people out there anyway, which is realistically is only through boredom. Because where do you benefit through being racist? By abusing someone because of the, their, their race or the colour of their skin. So, you know, that's why it doesn't bother me, because it must be bored and they must have too much time on their hands. Yeah. Would, would it, does it, ha has it helped you in business converting over to Islam? It's helped me in all areas of my life. And I think that that was um, all, all areas of my life, through being a better person, through getting up in the morning, through, through, through praying and feeling relieved and empty in my mind. You know, it's, it's like a, it's a form of, of meditation, should you say, you know, and you, you, like, you know, to spend a bit of quality time with God is, is, is a beautiful thing, you know? You know, to apologize for the stuff you've done. And, and I believe in, when you, when, when you pray, and this, this is how we look at it, when you pray, it's not it's not bad to ask for what you want and where you want to go in life and also you've got to apologize for any sins that you've committed which i try to make as less as possible and my my theory of it is and this this is why i'd like to spend most of my time asking for what i want instead of apologizing for what i've done you know so that also stops me from doing bad or doing wrong and listen to some people drinking isn't bad you know to some people eating pork isn't bad but to some people wearing gold isn't bad but these are all things stated in the Quran which God is telling you not to do so you know um, I'm, I'm, if, if I'm willing to follow the religion I'm religion to, um, I'd be a hypocrite not to follow everything it says. Now, like I say, I'm not perfect. I'm never going to be perfect. Like I say, only God is perfect. But if I don't follow what he's telling me in that book, why, why, would, I, why would I have converted in the first place? Mm. I know it's uh, over, certainly in the UK, a big culture of going out, drinking, etc. But obviously in the Quran, it's saying that drinking is not, is, is forbidden, right? It's pro prohibited, yeah. Do you reckon you're going to drink again? I'm going to try my very, very best not to. When was the last time you had a drink? Before I took my shahada. I haven't drunk since. Okay. I haven't drunk since. Good stuff. It's, it's a healthier way of being, mate. Definitely. Um, right, I want to ask you, because of uh, the, the subject of uh, converting over to you know uh, Muslim, it reminds me of boxers, because a lot of boxers have done the same. And um, since we done the podcast, you actually had a boxing fight, uh, November 2021, I think it was. October. October it was. October. Okay. Uh, plans for more boxing fights? Um, like I'd, I said this, I said this the last time I was on the, uh, I, I was on your podcast, you know, unless you're giving it your all, I don't think it's worth doing, but I've got such a passion and a love for boxing, but I've also got such a passion and a love for where I need to go. Now the two don't really combine. You know, like if you're not if you're not wanting and willing to push yourself to be a world champion, it's it's you know you're wasting your time and and the people around you's time. You know, if you haven't got them intentions, 
why would you why would you want to do I understand that some people want to do it for you know for charity and that it's good to do once in a while but you know as a professional and take it up as a profession and and spend all your time doing it you're going to look around and and, and the time's going to be gone and you're not going to move any further forward so you put the brakes on it for a while for the time <sighs> being I, the last time I was in here, I, the last time I'd done a podcast with you was only when I had one fight and I actually said that I wasn't going to box again then. And then I did later in the year. So, you know, it's, 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 it's possible. I'd like to. I love it. I, lo I love the sport. Yeah. You keeping yourself fit still, training? Yeah, I train. Yeah. Train three or four times a week. You've got to. Weights, running, Weights, boxing. running, boxing. Again, boxing will never leave you. It's something I enjoy doing. I enjoy boxing training. Yeah. Yeah, and you do it for your your mental health, your emotions, business to train. Um, I do it to keep fit. Yeah, you know, keep myself in shape. Yeah, the other element of boxing, though, as well, it can be good for business because it promotes your 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 profile. I mean, look, a lot of people would trust an individual who competes because they think, well, he's disciplined mm -hmm. with a sport like boxing. He must be disciplined. In, in business do you find that when you when, when you are competing um to be honest with you i'm, I'm, a, I'm a, i can't focus on two things yeah. you know like when i'm boxing i'm boxing I, I actually my mind comes right off of business and when i'm doing business my mind comes right off of boxing this is why there's always been such a gap between my right. fights you know mm. or, or like i can't seem to to click the, the the two and listen like i say if i had a, a business what was running and i didn't have to work and you, every single business you need to be overlooking regardless but without the drive of what i'm doing without me there i am the whole force behind everything i do yeah yeah understood. you know and all the time i'm doing that it's like you know boxing is not just physical boxing is very mental you know as, as much mental as i'd say it is physical hmm. definitely so it it takes a um, a a lot of mental energy as well, you know. It could literally drive you mad, you know. The diet, in the running, the training, it, you know, it takes it out. You're it's a, it's 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 one of the hardest sports. It's, it's known to be. Yeah. Talk about building your profile. I think I asked you this last time, but we didn't really dig too deep into it. Which is, you've been on a few TV shows. One of them is My Big Fat Gypsy Fortune. Another one, which is a Rich Kids Go Shopping. Um, I don't think I asked you last time, why did you go on to the programs and what was the kind of real purpose behind it? To build my profile and to get credibility. If you've seen somebody on the telly and, and, and you recognise them, you know, to, uh, um, to like I say, to, 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 to get credibility, to build a following. Like when I started then, I think Twitter was a, a, a lot bigger than Instagram was. But I still see the benefits of social media. Social media, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, a global meeting place from your phone. You know, how many people have you contacted via social media? Loads. How many relationships, like a uh, friendly relationship, have started via social media nowadays? It's a common thing. You speak to most people about how they've met their wife or, or you know, their girlfriend, their spouse, wherever their, whatever the situation may be, come via social media. Like, it's nothing to slide into someone's DMs. It's a common thing. Some people accept and respond, and there you go. Or, like, you know, they're... I don't know who's running these people's pages, but tell me something else. You can directly message the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, for example. I'm sure he has some sort of access. You know, no email, no nothing. Bump, just a message and it gets to him. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's amazing. It's a brilliant platform. And obviously, the more credibility you have on the likes of Instagram or any social media account, the more likely you are to connect in with them sorts of people. Yeah, definitely. Well, last time I interviewed you, I think you had less than 100,000. Now you're up to about 180. Uh, you were verified before. Um, have you got a real strategy plan behind your behind your social media? And how do you monetize it? Uh, I, I, I don't really monetize it. I just post a, a, a little bit of what I'm doing. I, I believe I could do a lot better. I do have a lot going on. But the problem is, you know, that is can also become a full-time job and, and take over your life, you know, to... Uh, to go out and film, you need to create content. People want to see what you're doing. They want to see what you're up to, you know, and I've got a following, you know, a lifestyle guy, living a brilliant lifestyle, but compared to some of the other influencers out there, and I wouldn't consider myself an influencer, but somebody, some people would, do you know? I mean, I might be a massive influence to people, but I don't really monetize it. They've, you've got a dashboard on Instagram that gives you who's, not who's looking, but the amount of people that's looking, etc. And, um, 
I just take a little photo of things I'm doing if I think I look good or or, or, or I have a nice photo taken. I think, oh, that could that could go on Instagram and also promoting a lot of my business on there. Yeah, yeah. Talking about you, you mentioned about Ronaldo. Um, I saw actually this morning that or yesterday he had 500 million followers on Instagram. Do you know that's more than the population of every single country individually around the world, bar China and India? I didn't know that. Yeah, so 500 million followers. I mean, I think it's just amazing. What, what's your take on that? Well, it's uh, like, you know, no, it's that that alone, if Instagram carries on how it is without having no property, without having anything, that's, that's it's money sat in the bank, isn't it? Like you, you could earn money from that. Like, obviously, I understand he's got mad sponsors anyway, but let's take them out of the equation. You know, there's money to be earned off of that Instagram. That's how I see it. Yeah. It might be the wrong way to look at it, do you know what I mean? But well, there's there's money there, isn't there? Do you know what I mean? Regard, hold on. He can reach out instantly to, to 500 million people. Okay, let's say he only gets 10% of that. 10% is what, 50 million? Yeah. So he's reaching out to 50 million people. If he can manage to get a pound off of each of them, or if he can manage to get a pound off of 10% of his followers, he's going to get 50 million quid like that. The, um, I saw uh, on a couple of the articles that he can charge, he does charge, two, two and a half, three million a post now. That doesn't surprise me. That's One all. post. So if I had, I don't know, this cashmere jumper, for example, I own the brand, if I gave it to him, he would charge me approximately two, two and a half million to post. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. Look at look at look at the, the amount of people that he's reaching. You know, like that's brilliant. I, I don't again. I don't really understand how advertising works with billboards, etc. It wouldn't take long to ring up and ask for a quote of how much it would cost. But you don't. Okay, let's say you hire a billboard on a, 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 in the middle of London somewhere, prime location. You don't know how many people's looking. I know that they're coming up with ways and means to see who's walked by and who's looked at it. But in reality, you don't know how many people's actually viewed it. Mm. Via Instagram, if Ronaldo puts it on his story, you can have a, an exact number of how many people have actually looked at it. Yeah. You know, which is, which is brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know? It's incredible. Um, being, I will call you an influencer. I know you probably don't call yourself it, but I do see you as an influencer. Someone's got a really, really good profile. Someone's dedicated to your business. Someone's always very, very positive. Someone's always looking for the next gap and next thing. I, you know, it's, it's, it's a great thing to see. And you're so fucking young still, which is, which is brilliant. So being an influencer in my eyes, I'd like to get your view on other influencers. Andrew Tate. It seems like it's taken over the world. I mean, when I interviewed you last time, back in 2021, I had no idea who this person was. No, me neither. I, I don't think I ever even heard no, of his neither, name. Me neither, me neither. Um, has he been good for social media? Has he been good for the internet? Or do you think it's uh, some of his views of being a bit uh, audacious? My own personal opinion, his views are very relatable. You know, they are very, uh, some of them, I don't know whether they're fact or fiction or his theory or his opinion, but he voices it so well and so hard that he installs it into you and makes it sound 100%. And with every with everything, I do not really disagree with anything he says apart from his views on women. You know, it was a woman that brought me into this world. They're very special people. You know, uh, uh, I've got a sister and uh, more than likely I'll have a daughter of my own. Now, I wouldn't want my my daughter to see me talk about women in that sense. So when his daughter, or if, if he has a daughter, I, I don't know, or, or let's say he has a daughter, for example, you know, in the future, inshallah, he has a daughter or if he wants children. She comes home and, and, and watches that. Would you want your son-in-law expressing themselves about women in that way or expressing how they feel about women in that way? I've listened to a few of his podcasts with like, you know, Rob Moore and, and a few others. And he does get challenged on this quite a lot, like your views on women. And he does stop a lot of the podcasters and say, no, you're getting a misconstrued, the context. 
I've said something, but you've not heard all the thing I'm saying about them beforehand. Do you think some of his messages are misunderstood and misconstrued? Well, the thing is, again, with Instagram, now, now I've probably done the same as what he's saying with these other podcasters. I don't sit and watch his interviews from start to finish. I see the clips that come up on Instagram, you know, the reels. That's as far as I see, you know, and, and I'm sure a lot of people are just cutting the bad out, but putting that on Instagram, that's what people want to look at, that's what people want to see. Um, but more than likely, more than likely, like I say, everything else he says is, is, is on the button. You can relate to it straight away. Mm. Or I can, I don't know about anybody else. You know, I think he's very intelligent, clearly. You now he knows what he's talking about. Very, very, very rarely is he ever stuck for words from what I'm, from, from what I can see. Yeah. He's, um, he, he appears to be, no one's perfect, but as far as a man's concerned, he's a big fella. He's muscular, he's in shape, he can have a tear up because he used to be a kickboxer. He's got money, he drives a Bugatti. He lives pretty much anywhere he wants to live, but I think currently he's in Dubai. He's very, very confident, he's got charisma, he's got a bit of style about him. I mean, he's almost like the, the perfect individual, wouldn't you say? I'd say I'm the perfect. <laughs> uh, 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 no, listen, he's, he's, doing, he's, doing, he's, he's doing extremely well. You know, like, he's got his mindset, he's, he's obviously already done extremely well. But again, he's pushing it further forward. Like, you know, he's, he's like, and I might be wrong, but really he's, he's, he's made himself an A-list celebrity, like getting compared to the likes of Ronaldo just via social media and well, his work ethic. Yeah, well, he was, when he done a um, Pierce Morgan mm -hmm. interview, according to Pierce Morgan, he was the most searched person on the internet at that present point in time. Let's just say that interview happened about a month ago, a month ago, he was more searched than Ronaldo, than the Queen, than Michael Jackson, or I know the Beatles. I mean that that's that that is crazy, but also very inspiring because it shows that you can come out of nowhere, and if you promote yourself right, if you use social media for you rather than against you, and I feel like you need to have a bit of a controversial view sometimes because mm -hmm. that scales really quickly. The point is. You can go from someone that no one really knows about to becoming the most famous person on the internet by using these platforms, right? One hundred percent, and he's 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 done it perfectly. He's the best, clearly. So good, they've took him off Instagram, you know. Um, and he's a very 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 influential person. Yeah. You know, I was, I was I was very pleased to see that he uh, converted to Islam. Um, and again, you know. It shows me even more so, not that I needed showing anymore, but, but it's the right thing. It's good guidance, you know. For yeah. someone like Andrew Tate, you know, like you said, the most searched person on Instagram. Yeah. Um, do you know his views? And they, I do believe, look, some of them are probably over the line. I'm not going to say he's an angel. Mm -mm -mm. Um, but I do believe once the mainstream media has got it in for somebody, they will misconstrue everything you say whether it's about religion, whether it's about business, whether it's about females, whether it's about males, whether it's about whatever. You could say something and you're just giving an opinion but with no nastiness behind it and then they will spin it and, and make you look like the devil, okay? And because of that, he's had so much pressure from the mainstream media that he has been banned off a lot of these social media platforms and they call it cancelling. The cancel culture today, do you think it's right what these these big platforms do? Like they no. even they even cancelled the most powerful man in the world at one point, which was Donald Trump, the president of the United States. I mean that is barbaric in my opinion. I don't agree with it. No, and and, and do you know what? I also don't agree with how they've got so much. Or like you know, to some people that platform is their life, and they can just take it away like that. A lot of uh, watch pages actually got taken down. Sure. You know, which which again, there's no reason behind it, really. You know, I don't, and, and for some people struggle to get them back. That's their life. They've built that up from scratch. Put a lot of time and effort into that. You know, and I don't believe that it's. Uh, I don't believe that it's correct. But unfortunately, unfortunately, it's uh, it's just that it's out of everybody's hands. There's not really a lot you can do about it. Look, if if the likes of Donald Trump can't do anything about it, you know, what chance do we have? Um, so like even a scenario like if your page got wiped out mm -hmm. your pages how would you respond to that 
there's not really a lot I could do. To be honest with you, I would try to get it back the best I could because it's obviously very valuable and I'd be a fool not to because I use it for business purposes, etc. But I wouldn't let it destroy my whole life. I wouldn't be in bed crying about it. You know, it's not my whole life. My life doesn't evolve around it. Yes, it's there. Yes, I use it as the tool that I believe it's been put there for me to use. And I use it in the, every which way. Uh, I, I, I try and make it benefit me, which I do everything in this life, to the best of my ability. You know, and Instagram does benefit me. It's no good saying that it doesn't. Yeah. Um, you know, it's... it's uh, uh, um, even for business, even for business pages, it's so simple, so easy for your eyes, you know, squares of pictures. You know, but nine times out of ten when I go on a website and look for something that needs doing, I'm looking for pictures. I'd say 50% of things are now being searched on Instagram. It's like a search engine of its own uh, for business and people-wise, you know. It it's, 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 it's an interesting place, you know. Yeah. It's like, listen, it makes the world that big. Yeah. Not even that big. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You can network and connect to people. You could meet like, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Or, well, I'd, uh, time's gone on now, but, you know, maybe 20 years ago, you, everyone was telling me you was on a phone that big. And now you can connect to whoever from wherever in the world, as long as he's got data or Wi-Fi, and have whatever conversation you want. You know, it's, 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 it's a brilliant tool. You can connect, you can speak to someone and only know their name and find them. Now, if you've got privacy concerns, then it's not for you, is it? Mm. For me, I haven't. I'm happy to put myself out there. It's beneficial for me to put myself out there. Yeah. Um, the last part about this uh, social media, Andrew Tate conversation uh, and the cancer culture is, I feel like it almost started in around the pandemic because there was, there was obviously the mainstream media and then mm. there was people on social media talking about what was going on. And some people had different views. Some people were completely this way and saying, yeah, this is a real deadly thing and it's gonna kill everybody. They almost had that attitude. I knew a guy who's a client of mine who didn't get his hair cut for well over a year. And when I asked him, I said like, what do you do to stay sane? So yeah, I go out and drive, drive in my car and with my wife, who I'm obviously in my bubble with. And, um, we go driving in the country and I went, oh yeah. So like when you're in the country away from everybody, I, I guess you get out and get some fresh air. But no, 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 I'm not, I'm not getting out of the car. It's way too dangerous. And he literally had this fear in his head that he was put into this box that you're vulnerable because you're older. And if you get outside and breathe the fresh air in, there could be someone a mile away who's got Corona who's going to kill you. That, that, that was, that was their, their belief. And then you have other people say, this thing is just an absolute, you know, con, it's a scam, blah, 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 blah. And I could actually see the the argument from, from, from both sides. I think now looking back, we realize it wasn't as bad as it was and certain steps that people have, have taken were a little bit extreme. But the point I'm getting to is if you had something which was against a general message put out there by the government, by people in power, you were actually ridiculed you were actually, you, you were banned, shadow banned, and then in some cases you're completely cancelled. Do you feel that the freedom of speech right now is completely gone? I think freedom of speech is, 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 is gone anyway. You can't speak what's on your mind. You can't have an opinion or you can't, you can't make it vocal if, if you have an opinion, like what you actually think, regardless of whether that may be uh, um, about, about the coronavirus or your views on life or, or whatever it may be. It, to, you have to watch what you say, wherever you are and whoever you're in front of. If something's getting publicised or you're in front of a lot of people, you know it can, it can cause serious damage to you, to your credibility and your character. Mm. Which in reality it shouldn't be like that. I believe everybody is entitled to their opinion. Like you know, what, what's an opinion? It's nothing. It's words. You're not actually hurting anybody. Okay, mentally, some people might find it offensive or something, but you're not physically hurting them. And I just don't understand why that's a problem. Like me, I, it doesn't bother me. People can call me whatever they want. Mm. You know? And when it comes from a friend or something, you don't like what you're hearing, yeah, okay, it can be sore. But we live, we get on, we move on. And I like that's the same as Andrew Tate. What he says, you know, he, he says what he thinks. And now if you say what you think and what's on your mind, you kind of get, uh, 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 you, you get criticised yourself of why, because everybody's got different opinions. And the people that don't agree with you are obviously going to have something to say. 
You know, all all our opinions ain't the same. I believe everybody should have an opinion. We're all different. Mm. You know, some people believe that the coronavirus was nothing, but their people was dying. You know, but people die of the flu. It happens. People die. They, you know, it's, it's 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 a way of life. Unfortunately, throughout generations and generations, or, or years, centuries, there's always been something that's come up. Look, the plague, the bird flu you know some are worse than others but you know it, it happens these pandemics come along and you know it is what it is I'm, I'm i'm very sorry for anybody that did die and i don't mean to upset anybody but it is what it is you know life goes on and i think the quicker they would have moved on and carried on as normal i think the quicker the things would have got back to normal obviously but you know i think they did it was very 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 dramatic like the, the way i looked at it is you know if you had underlying health issues and it could have been serious I think then you should have stayed at home. Anybody that wasn't bothered, we've got our own lives. If we're willing to go and risk it and walk out and catch the coronavirus and we don't care about the people we love, which I don't mean that as in we don't, but we're willing to take the chance on passing the coronavirus on. Like if I had somebody in my family with underlying health issues, I wouldn't have walked out the door. I wouldn't. But thankfully, thank God I don't, but... What I'm saying is we should have been left to to live our own lives. Now, there, there is a lot of, with the government and everything else, they're trying to restrict us in every which way, shape and form. I, I do see like then, like that, that, that was the start of something very different. You know, that lockdown. I've never seen nothing like it. I'm sure in your lifetime, have you ever seen anything like it? You know, it was very strange times. And even so now, you know, pushing the vaccination. Why? If you want to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. If you don't, don't. Why have we got to? And then start restricting where you can and you can't go. I just don't understand why that's okay to be forced and made. You know, there there are uh, there are consequences if you do not get a vaccination. Not if you want to do it. If you want to do it. It's our life. You know. So if if we want to get vaccinated, we get vaccinated. If we don't want to get vaccinated, we don't want to get vaccinated. And that was what was scary. Why? What is behind that to make them want to do that? Is that just to show how much can what they can get away with? I definitely believe that that time in history, which was only a very short time ago, shifted a culture. And something that Andrew Tate was talking about that I have a proper view on because and like you i've fought i've got I have 16 fights as a boxer okay not pro but you know it's, it's still getting in there with another man having, having a go and um you know there, there are there are men converting to women sex changes and they're free to do whatever you want if you today if you said to me i'm now going to become a female tomorrow i wish you all the best of luck well, obviously, as long as you're not hurting anybody in the process, then you're free to do what you want. If you want to go to a new faith, it doesn't matter. Like, do what makes you happy. I get that. But when you start messing around with the laws of, the laws of like, probability and science, that's when it becomes dangerous. And I, I actually watched it on the internet the other, the other day or social media. A lady in America made a debut say a lady, a man who was converted to a lady, made a debut and completely knocked this woman out with a knee, like powerful, powerful knee. And the even funny thing is when the, when he, she was talking to the crowd, had like the deepest voice ever. And it was almost a bit comical. Like, you know that this is not a female, it's a male. It's like the old thing, you know, a wolf in sheep's clothes. You know, it's, you know, it's a wolf under there, but it's in disguise. Now, I get, you know, if you feel like you're this other gender, I get that. I've even had a guy on my podcast called Jackson Feely who's converted from a female to, to male. And now Jackson's happy. And I get that. And I wish him all the best of luck. But when you start competing and actually having fights, it's a completely mad thing. And Andrew Tate was giving his view on this stuff and saying, just because you call yourself a female doesn't actually scientifically make you a female, even if you've had all the operations and, and hormones, you're going in there and you, you could potentially kill somebody else because the culture is now, oh, I don't want to offend anyone. You know, if they are a female, if they are now a male, can't challenge them on that. You can't even call someone now, Alfie, oh, that person looks like a male or female. You can't even say that. They they could be non-binary. It's, do you know what I mean? It's all, it, I feel like it's all stemmed from the pandemic lockdown days. And now... It, it, there's a there's a few things which are going against logic 
such as the fighting game. And I wanted to get your opinion on that. I think that that's wrong. In any which way, shape or form, I think he's 100% right. There should not be any type of male, or, or, or like they say, they might consider themselves a female. Again, they're, they're not. They have got man's arms. They would have man's legs. They would have a man's brain, in a sense. You know, they would have man's strength, surely. You know, I don't understand it. I don't understand sex changes. I'm not interested whatsoever. It doesn't interest me. But it is wrong. It's unfair, to be honest. So unfair. If I was a female in a cage fighter, right, for example, for, for, for a woman to turn, uh, to, to, to turn male is different because obviously a male would have the advantage, I would say, obviously. And for a male to turn to a woman and then get in a fight with a woman is going to have the advantage, like way over an advantage. And, you know, it is, you know, boxing and, and, and UFC and contact sports are dangerous enough, dangerous enough about that. Like, you know, again, again it is difficult for me to speak because, it, again, freedom of speech is taken away. And I don't want to offend anybody, but... In anybody's eyes, realistically, that that can't be fair, can it? You know, put put put. You know, bah. women aren't as strong as men. I'm sure that there are some out there. You know, what 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 cut the cloth that are that are very strong. I'm sure there's women out there a lot stronger than myself still. But you know, as a rule, we're stronger, more dominant sex. You know, when we're back back all the way to the days in the cave I, or, or years and years ago I don't know I wasn't there but as far as I'm aware the men went out hunting big mammoths and sabre toothed tigers the women stayed back in the cave through history that has happened when wars have happened I'm not saying that there are not women that do their parks I'm sure there's loads of women in the army who's front line it's the majority of men back in Henry the Eighth's days when there was knights in armour. It was men. You know? Yeah. And to be honest with you, I think boxing, women's boxing in general, has come on in leaps and bounds. But it's still not quite like the men's, is it? And I'm not saying I like it, I loved it. I went and watched Savannah Marshall and Clarissa Shields the other day. It was a whole card of women's boxing and I had a thoroughly good night, see some unbelievable good fights some unbelievable good talent and I wouldn't never believe that I would have enjoyed it as much as that to be honest my own personal opinion you know I just don't believe it's nice to see two women fight you know but it, it's not fair is it for for because like you say just because you've had you've had a gender gender change I don't believe that you know mentally you might feel better about the whole situation but in reality physically you're still a man aren't you yeah uh, like the reason why I led on to this is because the commentators, the ref, everybody he was talking, they all were talking like as she was a a woman from birth, right? And they were talking about when she knocked out. Because obviously the, they, was, they must have been frightened yeah. to offend anybody, yeah. you know? Well, when she knocked out the other lady with this knee, she completely just, just planted this knee on her face and she was gone. The commentators were like, oh, amazing on her debut, you know, the technique. I was like, no, you're not all saying what you really think. It was because of the power. Mm. Because really underneath that skin, there is a man's dense bone, body and, and muscle under that. And, and that's been the, the, the big difference. But again, if one of those commentators said anything against that narrative, they probably would have lost their job. I was just about to say they would be worried about losing their job, you know. And like you say, you know, they don't want to lose their job. Same as The same as anybody else doesn't. But... Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a hard one to answer. Even, even so, on, on this podcast, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to get criticised for how I think and this and that. But what I do strongly believe in, we should all be able to have our own opinion. If you're, if, if you're in that situation, right, and this is the way I see it. If you're in that situation, you've had a sex change, right? You shouldn't be worried about people's opinions anyway. Yeah. Not jumping on the bandwagon of, oh, he's criticising me or saying this and this and this and this about me. You shouldn't be bothered about it because people are going to talk. People are entitled to have their own opinion. We've been given a brain. Why can't we use it? We can't speak how we feel. Yeah. So we're just supposed to, to just to say what makes everybody happy, which in reality, 
It doesn't, does it? Do you know what I mean? Mm. It doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Like the swimmer as well. The swimmer, I've watched the swimmer. The swimmer's been clearing up in the... Uh, uh, I don't, I'm not doing much research, but I've seen it come up on Instagram. In America, you know what I mean? Not, in America, yeah. the swimmer's been clearing up, which is also another transgender, no? Yeah. This is not fair, is it? Yeah. I think the, the big difference from my stance is uh okay swimming is swimming and it is super unfair you've got all these females who've been training all their life and then they're getting beat by someone who's just converted in the last year mm. over to being a female used to be a man and now they've got a major unfair advantage and now they're just they're, they're dominating but at least no one's getting hurt mm. in boxing or mma people are getting absolutely but, you know I, I do i do get that i do get that i do get that and like i said Mate, not that I ever want it to happen because I hope everyone gets in a boxing ring healthy and comes out just as healthy, but maybe they're looking to it when someone does get hurt. That's when they might open people's eyes to what's actually going on, you know, because it usually takes a catastrophe or something extremely bad to happen for everybody to go, whoa, this ain't right. Yeah. No, not that I want that to happen. I don't. I hope everything will run smoothly and I hope there's no mad injuries because it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous, life-changingly dangerous. People have died in boxing rings, hmm. you know. But it might, it might, it might take that for them to, to have different views. Yeah, for sure. Um, your view, Twitter. Mm -hmm. Elon Musk has taken it over recently. Good thing, bad thing. Um, oh, he's a very, very educated and very, very wealthy man. Um, I don't really know. A, a lot of sense comes out of his mouth, and he's done extremely well. You know, I think uh, uh, I don't know if it'd be good or bad for Twitter. Like, I don't really have much to do with Twitter anymore. I'm more on Instagram, but I think it could be the start from him buying them all. Maybe. Yeah, exciting. Um, another influencer, more. He's, he's shocked me, but he's 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 making his mark in in the boxing division, which is Jake Paul. Mm -hmm. Your view on him as a YouTuber now, boxer? Uh, I, I, do you know what? I don't. He's done extremely well for himself. He's done extremely well for himself. He's winning all the fights, but he's beating everybody that's put in front of him. You know, what more can you ask for? Do I think he's ever going to be an elite champion? No, I don't. Can I blame him for what he's doing? Absolutely not. He's got his audience, he's got his fans, he's, listen, he's, he's doing better than some world champions, like ticket-wise and views-wise, and why not use it to your advantage? Okay, listen, in reality, it's not the best for boxing, is it? You know, for, for, for somebody just to come out of nowhere and start fighting all these UFC fighters, etc. But I think one day, the thing about it is, is he has got a lot better shot the most really because you know he hasn't got no worries he can dedicate his whole life to boxing if he wants to and he will have the best people around him which are unaccessible for most people for him they're not because of where he is in his life you know he's he's you know super famous beyond belief um and you know he's not that he's not that bad of a boxer you know you just you gotta remember he's still a novice regardless you know and uh, i think he's done the right thing because i do believe a novice of equal, uh, with with an equal, um, a novice with, with you know with, with an equal amount of fights and and at the same stage in their career, I think would kill him. Yeah, I've got to be honest. I'm still shocked that he done what he done to Ty Tyrone Woodley. I think he should have done better. Addison Silva. I don't know, older guy, but he is Anderson Silva. You know, he was at one point a formidable force in, in UFC and a very, very dangerous man. I mean, he not in the UFC, but he, he beat uh, Lightning Lee Murray, who was uh, a bad, 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 like as in a nasty fire, you know, very, very scary man. Um, and, and, and he did beat him. Um, I haven't actually watched that fight fully, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a little watch. But credit to him, he's still beating another man. But when it comes down to a real boxer, Mm. You know, I'm trying to think of some people in his weight division, but if he came across, what is he, cruiser or light heavy? I don't even know. Yeah, or like super, super well, middleweight. I think he's light heavyweight, because Tommy Fury's light heavyweight. Well, well, Anthony Yard. Anthony goes, Yard would kill him. It absolutely tear a new hole in his backside, yeah, um, would in my opinion. <laughs> <He would kill him. laughs> you know, uh, Kovalev. 
you know, who 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 fought Canelo. But again, we we are, we are talking like Anthony Yard and and Kovalev are way way down the line. They're very experienced fighters. But let's say Anthony Yard within his first six fights would have still absolutely annihilated. What him. what about fighting Tommy Fury? Because apparently that's going to be happening. Um. I don't, I don't really know what to take from it, to be honest with you. I hope it does happen. I was looking forward to it the first time. I'm sure that they've had their problems and their complications with it all, and I think it will be a very good fight. And, and you know, I really hope Tommy would win. I, I hope, actually, I don't believe in Jake Paul, to be honest with you. I look at some of them fights, and I actually look and think to myself, are they, are they legit? Mm. Because this seems all too good to be true to me, for him mm. to go in there and start knocking people out in unbelievable fashion like that. Now, sometimes, and we're talking about experienced fighters, men that have been in a cage. You know, okay, boxing and cage fighting in the UFC are very, very different. Very different. But they are still big, strong, tough men that know how to move, know how to fight. And they're getting in with a novice that, that's been in the ring six times, getting knocked back out. Now, I hope I'm wrong. Oh, but do you know what? It doesn't bother me if I'm wrong or right, to be honest. But is it legit? I've looked at a lot of them and I think to myself, is is that is that real? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because look, his brother is equally the same size. Didn't really lay a glove on Mayweather. In hindsight, regardless of how good and bad somebody is, when you're talking that size difference, you you should hurt them, shouldn't you? And I don't know if they was allowed to knock each other out or do whatever, but as far as I'm aware, they was. Well, Logan Paul, I've watched uh, it a few times. There was a point where... Didn't ever trouble or hurt Mayweather, but he sort of imposed himself on him mm. and he was trying to hit him down. And you could see the massive weight and height difference. And Logan Paul was trying to hurt him. Mm. But because of the skill, because of the defensive genius that Mayweather is, he just couldn't penetrate. And then, no. and then he just, you know, Mayweather does what he always does, which is gets the timing right, gets the distance right and starts beating him. But yeah, I, I've, I've raised the same question. Are some of the fights that Jake Paul has had in recent times... Are they completely legit and were they fixed? Listen, I'll tell you what I find strange. Right, okay, yeah, they're big fights. Okay, they're big fights, you know, they're UFC fighters. And he's not entitled to get in with, not, not, I, I don't know really somebody, he's not entitled to get in with the likes of Anthony Yardy. Experience wise, he's nowhere near ready. You wouldn't, if you was 100% been boxing your whole life, you wouldn't just have six fights mm. and then jump in with Anthony Yardish. He's not, he's not ready for that. But what I am curious about is, okay, he's boxed a couple of cage fights. He's going to fill the stadium out regardless. Regardless, people are going to come and watch him box. Now, I think what he needs to do is, is get in there with... With, with somebody that's had six and won six or ten that's won ten somebody that's around the same sort of level that is a boxer you know an Olympian and then see where he's at or maybe not even Olympian Olympian I still think is very unfair because an Olympian has had world class experience without even stepping into a professional boxing ring so that's why obviously a lot of Olympians do very well yeah I like to see him fight someone who's got a bit of a name as, as a boxer at a British level and see what what happens mm. there. Tommy Fury, he's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders because if he doesn't win that fight against him, and I, he's not only got to beat him, he's got to kind of really hurt him and probably knock him out or stop him because he's got that big legacy. You know, his name he's a pro, he's a he's a proper he's meant to be a proper boxer. But what people are not taking into consideration is Jake Paul will have also the best of trainers, the best of dietitians. People that have lived, you could have 10, 10 of these people around him. It's going to be such a big fight that people are going to want to get involved with it. He's like, you know, he's, like I say, he's got a lot more advantages than people think, you know? Like, you know, not that I want to uh, compare boxing to ice skating, not in any which way, shape or form, because boxing is an art and it's very difficult to master. I know that myself. But, you know... Look, look at dance on ice for example you'd think that like, some people step onto an ice skating rink and can't even skate within the time that dancing on ice comes on they're doing twirls and spinning round etc and you'd think that they've been doing it for a lifetime you know and I think boxing is very different still but just in comparison to, to have a think about you know it can be done if you've got professionals and the best people around you you know I think he could he could you know 
progress a lot faster than the average person and he doesn't have money or anything to, like that to worry about yeah. he's got it to give away if anything putting your money down mm -hmm. Tommy Fury Jake Paul who wins Tommy Fury and how does he win I'd like to say that he would knock him out but the thing is I think that do you know what could what could happen is like you say the pressure could just and I still think he'd win but I think you know he could come out because you know they've had a lot to say to one another you know, and sometimes that can that can work against you more than it can work with you. And the thing is, Jake Paul's got no pressure. Mm. If he wins, brilliant, great, yeah, just beat Tommy Fury. If he loses, well, I wasn't a boxer anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> where I'm coming from. Yeah. Win -win He's been Jake boxing Paul. his whole life. He's Tyson Fury's younger brother. Of course he's going to win. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, business must be going really well. You're obviously, you know, you always dress really, really sharp and stuff. If I could talk about got nice diamond chain on looks like a platinum rolex on, on your wrist rare trainers on if i can talk about those yeah, Alfie. you can talk about whatever yeah, so you want they're the, collab, the, the louis vuitton air force one um you're clearly into your fashion and also um celebrating your 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 victories by treating yourself so since i've interviewed you last what kind of things have you bought new car moved new moved into a new new place new area what how have you treated yourself genuinely everything is for um everything is for it's genuinely and i, and I, and I mean this I'm, i actually don't call it treating myself i actually believe it's investing in myself you know if you've got nice shoes on and you're dressed well people want to know you people want to talk to you and it, it helps with what i'm doing as for a watch i wear a watch again it's a brilliant talking point i buy and sell watches now if there's one on my wrist the best place for it to be to try and sell it is on my wrist you know, I sell whatever, whatever I've got on and, and I, you know, I don't believe I'm an influencer, but as you say, you see me as an influencer. I, I like to look smart. I like to go out a lot. I used to, I like to look well. It's good for my character. And in this day and age, it's good to keep up your street credibility, you know, and, and dressing nicer and, and looking nice is, 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 is good for that. Yeah. But as for what I say, treat myself, like I say, I don't call it treat myself. Personally, yeah. Any new cars? Um, I bought a, a, a Defender the other day. Uh, in in as soon as you've seen me, I have. I bought a nine eleven Turbo S. And didn't you have a uh, Ferrari Port Portofino? F eight. Oh, I had right. F eight, but I don't know if I had that. When, when did I come last time? May two thousand twenty one. I can't. I I got that car in May twenty twenty one. I don't know if it was just before or just after. Um, and then after that, that car went. And then I've got a 911 Turbo how, S. How come you got rid of the Ferrari? We just don't keep cars. Listen, after a while, they just depreciate. It's been a mad year for cars, actually. Yeah. You know, they've actually gone up. You know, I'm sure as anybody can remember, anybody saying, you know, what, oh, you drive a car out of the garage, it's going to be chucking pound coins out the exhaust pipe and all this mm. crap. Well, it wouldn't this last couple of years. Yeah. Take it out of the car, or go out of the garage. If you get a car out of the garage, you'll be earning money. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Porsche Turbo, uh, the Defender, and anything else that you're looking it. at? That's yeah. it, really. Yeah, nice. nice. Car-wise. But again, like, you know, it's a, um, I've got to have a nice car. And again, it's, it's, it's for my character. Yeah. Because I'm not going to lose too much, then I'm yeah. interested. Yeah, I understand that. And to talk about cars, the person that is a good friend of yours, who's been on my podcast twice now, uh, Lord Orlean. Um, I've got a lot of time for him. I think he's always on his game. He's got a lot of energy, very good communicator, always looking to push the boundaries, now going over to Dubai and looking to set up uh, Platinum Executive Travel over, over in the UAE. I think he's such a great guy and we've always had really good episodes. Um, you two seem like, you know, come from different worlds, but you've joined, like, you know, you seem like really good mates. Like, how's that friendship? How was that sort of manifest manifested over the last few years? Uh, it's, it's, it's a mad, it's a mad, mad story actually. But we're, we're very, very, very good friends. And obviously, listen, business-minded people are going to get on. That's all you need in common with someone, you know, to, to build up a good relationship. You know, we can ping ideas off of one another. Listen, we both use Instagram as a very useful tool. He's a lot better at it than I am. Um, but I met him once uh, uh, in 2000, 2015, I think it was. So it was a good six or seven years ago then. And obviously knew who he was. We got talking. And from there, obviously, I haven't had cars of the likes of what he's got. But, you know, again, we had a lot in common. 
you know, like cars, yeah, I've got a new Ferrari coming out of the garage soon, I'll, et cetera, et cetera. And it just led on there. He's very business-minded, very educated, very clever. And then following that, I've got a 6x6 uh, uh, G-Wagon. And I put it up on Instagram. This was five or six years down the line. We've been friends for, for a long time since then. But then we actually started doing a little bit of business together because he used to hire it out via his platform, as in Platinum. Um which again, which is brilliant. It was a brilliant collaboration. I had the car, he's set up, ready to hire vehicles out. Why would I want to try and take that burden on myself? Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's good, really good to see. Okay, so uh, any, anything else that you, you, you're up to over the next few years, Alfie? Anything that we can look forward to? Do you know what? They come at me. I'd, I'd, nothing really is ever planned. You know, it just comes up. Got any uh, trips booked, any holidays, anything um, you do for New Year's? No, not at the minute. To be honest with you, I'm trying to, uh, I'm actually trying to, to, to slow down a little bit, try and save as much money as I can and try and get uh, further up on the property ladder. Nice, nice. Got anything you've got your eyes set on at the moment? Not really. I think that, um, I think the property is going to come down very shortly. And I think if you've got money, I think it's going to be a very good time to buy. And... I haven't got my own anything. I'm up and down looking at a few bits and pieces, you know, and if something comes up and it's in the money, then I'm going to try my best to try and buy it because I believe that property in London is just a winner. Yeah. I asked you this question last time. I always round off my podcast by saying, what is your interpretation of what, what be happy, never content means to you? You gave me an answer last time. I want to see if the answer has changed. So what does be happy, never content mean to Alfie Best Jr.? Well, I believe that it means that, uh, obviously, be happy, but always work for more. That's it, mate. Thank you very much for your time today, bro. Really, really appreciate it. I hope everyone's enjoyed the episode. Subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff, and be happy, never content. Thank you once again, Alfie Best Jr. Pleasure's all mine.